Yo, what's up guys, welcome to a new Stamina Warden PvP build video. In this video I will show you what I run in almost all my BGs lately, as well as in 2vx and other small scale scenarios in CP and non-CP campaign. I think this build is really strong because you still have a lot of damage, a lot of healing like in the other meta builds, but with this build you sacrifice a bit of damage for a lot of group utility through transmutation. So let's get right into the gear. So we're still gonna use Bloodspawn, I think it's one of the best monster set available, but if you need to be more tanky, a Pirate Skeleton is also a good alternative, but if you use it, you sacrifice a bit of group healing and group utility for your own tankiness. On body we use Fury, I prefer Fury over 7th Legion, but if you only have 7th Legion it's also a good choice. We use 6 heavy, 1 medium, and everything in Impen, and now comes the difference in my last build, as well as in other meta builds, I'm using transmutation on back bar only. In order to use transmutation efficiently, you will need Somerset, so, so you can transmute jewelries in robust, so you don't lose a lot of stats. The one and two piece, a region, are perfect for our magical sustain, because with these two region pieces, we can sustain bird of prey at every offensive rotation. And the 5 piece of transmutation has such a good uptime and a really easy proc condition, so you can easily have a 100% uptime on the buff for your group. So we use 3 robust jewelries, 1 hand back bar infused with the weapon damage enchantment, and a shield impen with stamina and glyph. So for the people that don't have Somerset, so they can't transmit jewelries, you, you're still able to use transmutation on back bar. So you can run 1 7th legion signed jewelry drop that is robust and drops in, uh, in blue and you can upgrade it to purple afterwards and use one healthy 7 legion jewelry and one transmutation arcane jewelry and on body you use two transmutation light armor pieces for example on hands and belt so in the end you have two armor transmutation one jewelry and two back bar transmutation so you have transmutation on back bar and 7 legion on both bars active if you use this setup, make sure to use only 3 trusted glyphs, so you make up for the stamina loss by not using two robust jewelries. On front bar we use Agility, 2H, Sword in Nirn, with Escapist Poison. I'm using the Serpent Moonstone in non-CP and Battlegrounds, and the Warrior Moonstone in CP campaign. I'm using the new gold food for stamina sustain, but if you don't have a lot of gold you can still use Dubious Camaphron, the difference is quite small, but if you're a minimax I use gold food. Currently I'm still running the Immobility Speed Potions, this patch still beats, next patch we'll have to see. And as race I swap back to red card again after testing Orc and Argonier. And personally, since I started to play a lot of BGs, I prefer red card over Orc because of the extra sustain you get. But the difference between these two are quite small, and I would say Argonier is third place, and every other stamina race, for example Wood Elf and Khajiit, is also okay-ish. So here's a quick look at my stats when I'm not in zero deal and unbuffed. Personally I think this is one of the best setups available if you wanna still do damage, have good healing and give your group more support than just going full glass cannon or going full heavy in full weapon damage setups. I think the group utility you get from transmutation is more worth than the extra damage you get from stacking two weapon damage sets. But even if you run transmutation, your damage is still over the top and you're still able to one-shot the priority targets or the targets that don't pay attention. I will quickly go through the CP, you can post the video if you like to see the CP closely. You can still change around some CPs, but I think this is a really good setup. Now let's go quickly through the skills. On back bar I use Ice Fortress, Snatch, Leeching Vines, Shimmering Green Lotus and the Heal Ult. From bar Momentum, Bird of Prey, Rare Slice, Sub, Vigor and Dumbbreaker. I wouldn't change anything on the bar setups, because personally I think this is the best one possible on the Semen Warden. Because we have the two regen passives from Transmutation, we can sustain all these magical buffs, as well as Bird of Prey before every ult, without getting out of mana. I prefer playing with Leeching Vines as well as with Green Lotus together rather than dropping one of them and going Burst Heal because if you use both of them you will have more healing overall and you will have an insane uptime on Nature's Gift 
and the accelerated growth passive because of leeching mines. And you don't want to drop green lotus because you lose 10% crit and a strong heal over time. On front bar I dropped a spammable for bird of prey. Personally, uppercut is such a bad skill that it's not worth to use. So I prefer having more damage on my subterrain and downbreaker drops than pressure over time. In my opinion, the spammable loss is not a huge deficit for you. You can't have everything, so in this build I'm dropping pressure over time for more healing with Leeching Vines and Green Lotus combined, as well as similar, similar burst damage with Bird of Prey and Dawnbreakers. Personally, I think this skill setup is the best available for 2H and Swollen Bard, Stamina Warden, and the Transmutation Fury Bloodspawn combo is a really strong setup if you want to have high damage and more group healing and group utility. The setup will be still pretty strong next patch and I think it's worth it to invest transmutation stones to retrade the transmutation jewelries. Before I finish this build video I wanna quickly talk about how to play this PvP build. And like on every other PvP build it's important to have your defensive buffs up all the time. In on Seven of Warden you will have to keep up Ice Fortress, Green Lotus and Leeching Vines. So if you're on PC you can use add-ons to track your buffs to have an easier time to keep track of your deep buffs. You use Shimmering Shield around every 10 seconds so you have a good uptime on Major Heroism and with the extra ult you can use more defensive heal ults with Healing Ticket or use more offensive bursts with Dawnbreaker. Since you don't have a spam bill, and for example if you're in BGs you can tr treat Vigor like a 5 second buff so you should try to keep up Vigor all the time. In BGs, your whole pressure over time comes only from subterrain, so use subterrain around every 3 to 4 seconds. When you have ult ready, you can try to do an offensive burst, and every time you do an offensive burst, always cast Bird of Prey first, then into a subterrain, spar swap back for light attack for the weapon damage proc, swap back to front power, do a heavy attack into a downbreaker. Against more experienced players, you can't do a fully charged heavy attack because they will just block the incoming burst, so it's better to just use Bird of Prey, Subterrain, back by Light Attack, into a Vigor, into a Dawnbreaker, and Reverse Slice. That was it for the build video. If you're interested in how to play this build, check out my past PvP highlights edited gameplay for some footage. And if you're interested in like a more in-depth guide on how to play Stamina Warden without a spammable, let me know in the comments below, so I will do a separate gameplay commentary of a BG game I did and I can comment on what I did and why I did it. Subscribe to my channel for more top tier PvP builds and high level PvP gameplay. I hope you enjoyed and see you next time.